Petroleum and ammonia are extensively used in our modern world. Whether it's the fuel in your car, the plastic in your house, or the fertiliser used to grow food, we will take an in-depth look at tubular reactors, the simplest of continuous reactors. Hi, I'm Dan and I'm an R&D scientist at Stoley Catalysts. So how do tubular reactors work? In the simplest sense, a continuous tubular reactor is just a pipe, a cylindrical vessel where fluids are continuously flowed through, usually at a steady velocity. They might be heated or cooled through the exterior using electric heaters or a heating jacket. Not that type of heating jacket. Reactions can be carried out in a number of different ways. For example, with single phase flow, the reactants will enter one end, react inside, and exit as products. In two phase flow, for example in separation processes, or in the trickle bed reactor, the liquid phase may flow downwards, or gas phases are bubbled upwards. We call this countercurrent flow. When the two phases are flowing in the same direction, we call this co-current flow. So what type of reactions can be carried out? Tubular reactors are versatile due to their simplicity and are often employed in well-known processes such as the harbour process, petroleum refining and waste treatment. They may be empty in the case of homogeneous reactions or packed with catalyst or other solid particles for heterogeneous reactions. Tubular reactors are flexible and can be made of various sizes and engineered for various temperatures, pressures and materials of construction. So how are reactions controlled? In tubular reactors, the reaction control is dependent on the diameter of the tube. In tubes micrometers in diameter, effectively channels, heating and mass transfer rates are exceptional. However, as the diameter is increased, heat and mass transfer rates decrease. Rate of mixing is directly controlled by the fluid velocity. This is fine if you are operating at high fluid velocities, as you have turbulent flow. However, at low fluid velocities, you may have laminar flow, and therefore poor mixing. Mixing can be improved with the use of static mixers, but these are still ultimately dependent on the fluid velocity. As a general rule, reaction control in microscale tubular reactors is excellent. However, this performance suffers at larger scales. So are they scalable? The scaling up of tubular reactors is regularly carried out, although this might come with some trade-offs between reactor performance and costs. If the diameter of the tube is increased, the fluid velocity decreases, and as a result, heat and mass transfer rates also decrease. Reactions can be run through longer reactors, but these also require higher pressures. A way around this is by running many reactions in parallel, called numbering up. This isn't straightforward though, and can become very costly. Consequently, these trade-offs make scalability challenging, yet due to the simplicity of tubular reactors, in many cases the trade-offs are an acceptable compromise. So what about energy efficiency? Similar to continuously stirred tank reactors, tubular reactors are quite energy efficient because they are run continuously and avoid stop-start heating cycles. The reaction and process heat can be recovered from the product stream, improving the overall process efficiency. Yet often, high fluid rates are required to maintain heat and mass transfer, and more energy is required to push the fluids through. And lastly, what about catalytic reactions? What's the catalyst's lifetime? Catalyst lifetime in continuous tubular reactors can vary depending on the process. There are several key sources of catalyst deactivation. Mainly, deactivation is due to the intrinsic chemistry process, for example, through reactions with some minor impurities or byproducts. Deviations from the process conditions, such as limited heat removal, may result in hot spots in the reactor and cause rapid localized catalyst deactivation. This ties back into the problem of inefficient mixing when increasing tube diameter or lowering fluid velocities. Having the catalyst fixed or immobilized enables easy product separation and avoids deactivation due to mechanical wear and tear, also known as attrition. In some cases, the catalyst may remain active for months or even years. To summarize continuous tubular reactors. Tubular reactors are simple and easily maintained. They're good for fast reactions and are an efficient use of reactor volume. Their main drawbacks are problems associated with inefficient mixing at larger volumes. Control is another drawback of tubular reactors. Hotspots may occur with exothermic reactions and mixing is dependent ultimately on the fluid velocity. When efficient mixing is present, tubular reactors have a very high energy efficiency. However, this is tied to the fluid velocity. Tubular reactors lend themselves to catalyst demobilization which greatly improves their lifetime and ease of separation. Despite its drawbacks, the tubular reactor continues to be a mainstay of the petrochemical industry due to its simplicity, flexibility, and comparatively low space requirements. If you enjoyed this 
and want to learn more about other types of reactors, check out our videos and subscribe to our channel. To find out more about what we do, visit our website.